is quite concise. We haven't broken out um, in either Bitcoin or XRP to either side. So we are still ranging sideways. But there have been some important uh, moves on the daily and also the 12 hour time frames. So um, I'll start with Bitcoin because that's our sort of uh, market leader. Um, even though in, t in, in, in terms of ranges, Ethereum has been, um, has been stronger and more volatile. Now, as you can see, um, the RSI, the stochastic RSI on the daily has been in the overbought for a long time, a very, very long time, and it needs to reset. Um, now, we attempted last week um, to break the 20 EMA on the daily, and the next day we failed and we did a massive recovery to the upside. However, that recovery to the upside failed to break the previous high. Now, if we fail to break the previous high, that that means um, this is a triple top structure on the daily at the moment. And um, as long as the previous high stays unbroken and as long as we keep below the 20 EMA on the daily, the trend lower is going to continue. This 20 on the daily at uh, 169 I'll, I'll, I'll round it off at uh, 17K, will be our guideline from 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 now on if we stay below it so that's that's the main that's the that's the that's the big if that's the big condition as you can see on the daily it's it's uh, despite it being up and down on the 20 ma the the trend is sideways this is not an uptrend this is not a downtrend it's a sideways trend at the moment as it looks on the daily um I'm gonna swap over to the 12 hour for you to see, not the 12 months, the 12 hour for you to see the um, the MAs. Now, last night we broke uh, we broke below the five uh, on the 12 hour and we managed to turn the five quite acutely downwards. We've also broken this midline for this consolidation channel that we've been in. Um, I keep um, I keep on um, on uh, on following um, what's going on, on on YouTube, and there again there are loads of voices, one in clickbait saying this is gonna break up or this is gonna break down. We don't have any break upwards or downwards confirmation. As you can clearly see on the 12 hour time frame, um, we are below the, the support um, for the midline for this channel. We are below the 20 MA for this channel. We have tapped the top of the Bollinger on the 12 hour once, twice, three times without coming down to the bottom. The next and most natural move the next and most natural move would be down to uh, towards the 16.8 even a little bit below maybe 16.73 down to the 50 on the 12 hour this would be the most natural move uh, in terms of swings up and down and if we're looking at the swings for consolidation uh, let's say we're not taking the first one because it's the initial one we have one to three taps to the top and one two taps to the bottom we need another one here for this consolidation to be complete again we have a big uh, we have a big week coming this week we have news tuesday wednesday thursday the most important day is wednesday with the fomc meeting when the fed will decide the next um a rate increase and if it is what the market ex is expecting to the market will lift this is certainty in the market lifts the market. Predictability in the market lifts the market. Even if the rate is going up, if it's going up by the 50 basis points, I think, yeah, 50 basis points, as, as the Fed let the market uh, believe, this certainty will lift the market. Sure, there is, there is news of recession. They're talking about 35% soft landing macros are terrible but if this uh, news is what the market expects this will lift the market um i am in a short position on uh, bitcoin entered at 17.1 i will be looking to take profit at the 16.8 16.7 the reason being is um this could flip up and continue to the upside i am uh, i i 
uh, I, I'm, I'm watching this today slash the first part of the day tomorrow so that I close my position before the news starts coming out this week because I want to have a, uh, a fresh new position with a, with a stop loss in uh, to um, to navigate the news again do not uh, do not trade the news without a stop loss even if it looks um, super clear to go one direction or another use your stop losses and use them uh, at all times um, and wisely it doesn't matter you can go even for a higher stop loss in greater volatility but please um, uh, I wouldn't trade without a stop loss so on the 12 hour, I wanted to, to show you how, how strong this has rejected the support because for uh, since Friday, we've been keeping, since actually Thursday, we've been keeping this beautiful support on the 12 hour. We've kept uh, the five, the 10 and the 20. And despite that support, we haven't gone anywhere. To me, that is a clear rejection. Again, I'm not taking this uh, because of how long we've been keeping up here. I'm not taking this as an indication of going all the way down to here. 15.8 would be my next level of support as I have it here. Um, so this would be the next level because we, we, we've we yet to go through, through, le through two levels of support. 16.8 and then 16.3 and then 15.8. So I'm taking it a step by step, level by level, because this is how the market is moving. I need to trade with the market and I need to trade at its pace. And even if I have to miss one of these uh, stops in the middle, I, uh, I will make sure I'm following the direction and I'm trading the ranges as they show themselves rather than me um, going with my bias and saying, oh, it's going to go that way. Uh, the what's going on at the moment is the loss of support on the four hour the loss of support on the 12 hour and the rejection to the upside um, I, I was I was um, one thing that I want to show you again over the weekend we've had some beautiful crossings usually these these crossings um, I pointed it out in the chats uh, yesterday we had the five cross over the 200 we had the 10 cross over the 200 and the 50. We had the 20 cross over the 200 and the 50. So we had three beautiful crossings. They all they all brought some lifts, this one, this one, and this one, but none of them actually managed to break the previous high, which is a sign of um, lack of strength. It's also a sign of market, uh, market manipulation in terms of the market holding its range. Of course, the market is holding its range. There will be news coming out this week. And this is generally what happens before the news comes out. The market keeps ranging and keeps preparing and accumulating both sides so that be, when the news comes out, it will collect as much liquidity on either side. And generally, they like to do a spike against their uh, real intention, collect a lot of liquidity there, and then move on downwards, for instance, or upwards. For instance, um, we could see a spike on um, Wednesday down to... We could see a spike down to 16.3, collecting a lot, uh, a lot of the orders, the short orders below the 16.8 that are waiting to see that level get broken. Also collecting a lot of the liquidities of the longs that entered here and then reverse to the upside to the 18K area. Again, none of these scenarios have been invalidated. Um, we, I, I, I personally do not see any reason why we can't go again up to 17.5 or to 18k and that's why I am extra cautious when taking my profits now. Um, there's always, there's always another entry. So even as I showed you previously, if you think you're going to miss out on something like this, again, you know the level of risk that you're comfortable with because again this is very important for a trader uh, I'm not a high risk trader um, and I prefer to take my profits and then see a rejection see a rejection see a rejection and then trade that rejection as I showed you previously on um, on how to trade a breakout once it's broken out there's always going to be a back test there's a, always going to be a rejection at that level a double top situation on the one hour that you can enter on the 15 minute signals 
always, at all times. This is how the market has always worked. And if you happen to miss one of these because you're sleeping, don't worry, there's a new trade uh, the next day. The market moves up and down all the time. Um, so that's that's how I plan to, to trade this week. Um, just a couple of pointers. Uh, take your profits from any short positions at the next support and resistance line or secure them with a stop loss. Um, I plan to see what is going to happen around the six. I was um, telling you in one of the uh, sessions that we had last week. So on Bitcoin, I'm planning to see what ha what's happening around the 15. Uh, the 16.8 area and then for instance if it comes down and then goes up and then comes down again I will be placing after the first after the first lift I will be placing my stop loss up here to secure the profit and yes I am taking less profit than I would on this line but this bit is enough uh, um, is enough is worth seeing um, is enough enough in terms of uh, me keeping my position open and seeing if it can break down towards the 16.3. I am securing the profit and I'm giving my trade space to move. If it decides to flip up, I'm not gonna long. I am with, with how we are on the daily in this stochastic situation, I'm not going to long. I will be waiting for a, even though I believe it does, it, the market makers could absolutely lift it up to 17.5 it's a great time for me to just step back if I take profit here and watch it go up to here and then when it has a double top situation here and I, I can do a golden pocket or a 0.5 or a resistance level entry with a nice tight stop loss I'll go in and trade it down so I'm going to go with the trend and the trend is definitely the overbought and coming down um, long, in the long run but this week, uh, considering we have this volatility, and again, people are talking about a um, Christmas, a Santa rally, a Santa rally in the last week of December. So again, I want to avoid this volatility. I want to let the moves up play out and then go in and trade. Um, okay, now, what else um, did I want to tell you? I, wanna, I want us to have a look at the levels for Bitcoin. So the levels are okay. The levels are uh, the same as on Friday. They are the same as on Friday. Nothing has changed. Um, we are doing the four hour, but they are actually one hour levels uh, because um, it, there's so much sideways. It gets too choppy on the one hour to see. So we are below the level of support on the 4 hour um, of the 50 and the 20 and that level of support is the 17 point, um, no, I'm going to move it up a little bit higher. Seventeen point two. there we go. Because uh, I had it a little bit lower but then it's uh, it's too um, when when a support and resistance level is too um, when the pressure is on at that support and resistance level for too long, I um, I believe we need to adjust it and to um, make it uh, how can I say not necessarily less accessible, but um, it's it's not a level of resistance if it gets to it so often so the 17 the 17.2 17 generally i go with two uh two taps and three uh, strike throughs but because of all this sideways i'm allowing a little bit more um a little bit more strike throughs because it is it is very choppy so um, the 17.2 is the level that I am watching for a continuation to the upside. We break the 17.2. And again, I'm watching, I'm watching this as a level uh, to be held. So we, I'm going to remove this. So this needs, this price action needs to go up, hold it, and then continue to 17.5. 17.5 would be the next level. And if the next level is, 
is um, held again we're continuing up now Bitcoin has had explosive that's why I plan to take my profit because um, my liquidation would cover the 18k area um, I still don't want to be trapped in that area I want to be taking some profits after all this time in this trade um, I want to I want to see um, I want to see first the 17.2 hold. Now this, you can absolutely long it if you want to uh, with a tight stop loss. And if you get stop lost out, please be patient. Now this would be the, um, uh, this would be where Bitcoin could move, could move explosively to the upside. The way, for instance, it's moved here. Of course, the volatility was greater here, but it could do something along these lines. So Bitcoin does have this tendency uh, um, has had this tendency lately to just push very very uh, strongly after a small range consolidation so we need to be very mindful of that um, the next the next um, the next uh, uh, so that would be to, but this would be to me the lift scenario is the least uh, likely as we are right now because I believe the next move for us is to come down and either move up to here so uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna number these so this is number one this is this is in my opinion um, the first the first uh, and highest um, highest probability scenario coming down here um, and then from here, either going up sorry about the, the pathways guys this is what um, this is what sideways means um, there we go so from from here either a double bottom structure with a W reversal structure to test the 17.2 area one more time or coming down to the 16.3 and yes I know there are levels within levels but this is how trading trading the ranges is it's it's choppy it's um, it's zigzag it's patience a lot of a lot of patience a lot of entries but I've showed to you on on Friday you can take even five entries uh, with a tight stop loss and you can make up for those stop losses in very few um, profitable trades so um, to sum it all up the levels that I'm watching for the moment are 16.8 and 17.2 16.8 would be the first uh, and next line of support and resistance what happens there is we can either uh, make a double bottom and lift up towards 17.2 and if the 17.2 is held then we're coming up to 17.5 and 18k if the 17.2 breaks then we're coming uh, down again to test the 16.8 and this time if we're coming if we get rejected one more time from the 17.2 I think we're gonna come down all the way down to 15.8 but we, again we have to see how it plays out my reason for um, hesitating and say we're, we're continuing down is um, the the fact that the four hour stochastic is getting exhausted it's not yet exhausted so it still has space to go as you can see um, the regular RSI again it, last night it gave us the nice indication with the breakout here it came down but we have, um, we still have to, uh, we, we have to see this come to the bottom. Um, and then we still need to um, rehabilitate the one hour, um, the one hour RSI. The stochastic has already rehabilitated, but um, again, they can't be getting too exhausted. It also depends on how the news uh, is this week because again the news could be terrible and the Fed could increase it by more than 50 um, more than 50 basis points and if that happens if if the Fed do something that is unpredictable to the market then that's gonna dump the market that's gonna that's gonna uh, um, affect the market negatively 
So here, these are these are the the, the trades uh, the trade setups for this week. Same levels. It's just um, I'm I'm uh, I'm letting you know that you need to pay extra attention around the 16.8 and extra attention around the news. If possible, please have your stop losses in to secure profits around news times because um, they can be very volatile. You can have a 10% lift in a couple of hours. We've seen how FOMC days can go. Um, we're going to do ETH now, and then we're going to have a look at the DXY and the S&P. Um, and you, again, you're, you'll see that a lot of the data is correlated, and it's um, sort of like it's on the same page. Ethereum is in the same situation on the daily it is above again it's holding above the divergence line the green divergence line but it is breaking the, through the 20 ema on the daily it hasn't yet confirmed so yesterday we had the chance to close below it but we didn't we closed above it today we're continuing below it the fit the 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 view up has turned down so if we're looking at um the position of the view up um and the 20 it's it it's a it's an interesting M formation there in terms of the momentum for the VWAP. The stochastic on the daily has turned down, and it is in the normal range box. I believe it's only down from here. Um, we it we we could have we could have as for Bitcoin, we could have a descent down to eleven eighty. This would be my next level of support and resistance for Ethereum. If the 1230 breaks, now why is the 1230 so important? Um, if we look at the MAs on the four hour, the 1230 is the 200, uh, and that would mean a since since the four hour broke this 200, we had a back test here and it failed. We had a second back test here, and if this one fails again, uh, we're gonna come down lower. So. We need to be careful about the, um, why is this, um, so PMAs, this should not be here, this should be over here. Okay, so we need to, we need to pay super close attention because the, um, the rejection here of the 200 uh, MA on the 4 hour could bring an even deeper spill. If this was the first level, if this, if this was the first level here and this was the, second level there would be a third level as we have on the on our one hour um, charting so this would be level three at 870 and again no surprise to anybody that 870 is uh, is in the charts here because we have the Again, um, we have a we would have a double bottom structure with the previous June low at eight hundred and sixty. So, um, which would be again for Ethereum. Ethereum loves going back to base. So this is a huge. I believe it's a twelve hour arc, and Ethereum loves going back to base. Um, the base of the arc eight hundred and sixty, eight hundred and seventy, and that would be my most conservative target for where we are. Again, I'm not taking into account any particular bad news that might be coming into the market. It might be, uh, we might have our Christmas rally, um, we might have our Christmas rally, but then we could have a huge uh, drop after that as well. So we need to, um, we need to see, we need to see how this is going to play out. Uh, again, the, uh, as for Bitcoin, the four-hour stochastic is turning up um, here. I, I, I need. I, I think. I think it's it's okay. It's it's quite safe to assume that this will play out a little bit more here at the bottom of the below the um, normal range box. It it it. This. I don't think this will be a V-shaped recovery. It doesn't have any support gained at the moment, so there is no support gained at the moment for reversal. We are just back testing the 20 EMA on the one hour first time, and I told you there should generally be about three tests. It was really hard, for instance, here to determine the tests because they all happened sideways. 
So be mindful about this. If you are again in a short, the next level to take profit would be the 1230. And you uh, now you could take full profit there, or the same as I'm planning on doing on um, on Bitcoin. You can wait to see how this is gonna how this is gonna um, make a structure here, and if this structure is gonna uh, do a double bottom. Uh, please secure it with. Uh, please secure your profit with a um, stop loss, because you can place a stop loss above here. This is what needs to break in order for um, the lift to be confirmed. And if that breaks, and again, give it a little bit of space because you see they like these little bit of higher highs. You could also be watching it, but if you're not watching it, if you're uh, if you're sleeping, um, please put a stop loss uh, on. Um, I couldn't stress that uh, enough. So, again, I'm mindful that uh, the, the 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 macros at the moment are where they are in terms of the uncertainty in the market. There. Um, I'm mindful of the fact that we haven't managed to break a higher high for either. Um, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, the momentum to the upside has has lost support, uh, especially in the last uh, in the last Asian session. So we need to see um, we need to see what's going to happen because the, again we we moved down quite rapidly. Um, it's a, it would be a great uh, it would be a great bear trap to to be honest. Like it's breaking through uh, supports. Um, but this won't ha this this won't happen, you know. Um, all of a sudden, like we will still have hours that will play out, as they did here, as they did here. So this didn't happen all of a sudden. Again, technically, it was correct what happened here. Um, there are very very few V-shaped recoveries in the chart. Uh, the market gives you the chance to take your profit. And if you see something along these lines, along these lines, along these lines, with uh, uh, with wicks coming down to the bottom and not being able to break into lower lows, again, nobody has ever regretted getting paid from their trades. Um, we do have increasing volumes in these drops, which generally means that... Um, the bulls are waiting to buy in. So um, increasing volumes for drops to me is a red flag. Um, again, it, it's I don't think it has played out. We don't have any signs of reversal, but I'm just keeping an eye out. And um, if if you see me making a, 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 w, um, a w pattern for reversal, um, and posting it, uh, you know, you know what that means in terms of the next level and a reversal to the next level to the upside. Again, that doesn't mean that we're breaking up. It doesn't mean that Ethereum will go to fourteen hundred. No, it just means that the twelve thirty for the moment level is rejected, and we might be heading again up to twelve ninety. Just to sum it up, uh, the way I've done for um, for Bitcoin. 12.30 and 12.90 are the levels that I'm watching for Ethereum in terms of uh, breaking towards a particular direction. So these would be the, the, the initial signals of the breakout and based on these, if they get confirmed, the direction is um, confirmed. <laughs> and if they get invalidated, of course, it's, it means rejection. But that is what the conversation is with a ranging market, unfortunately. As soon as we break that 20 today and we hold below it for one day tomorrow, we'll have our trend back to the downside. And then I can tell you the trend is down. Watch for retracements to the upside and uh, take a short position um, when the signals are three yeses. But um, if... If we don't have that confirmation on the daily, then we we can still continue to range sideways um, between the 1290 and the 1230. And it is a generous range to trade. 
I personally will be taking uh, only short positions because I think it's the it's a nice it's a nice uh, trading life balance. Uh, waiting for the market to lift, putting um, a seven oh two for XRP and a golden pocket entry for Bitcoin, and then just keep doing it rinse repeat rinse repeat um it's a it's a nicer balance than having to watch every single move and every single start of the session um but that's again that's 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 where i am and that's the level of risk that i am um comfortable with um and yes i think there's nothing wrong with a trader being comfortable with that level of risk because that avoids um any um how can i say impulsive decisions so the more calculated you are, the better. So that's what I'm waiting for uh, for Ethereum. I'm waiting to see the 1230 level being met. And when that level is met, what happens there? Let's do the DXY. The DXY for the moment on the four hour is down. I'm going to switch over to the trader's reality. It is below the, twin, uh, the daily open and it's below the pivot point. So that means the trend is down. A DXY down on the four hour means that the um, uh, means that crypto has the chance to go up, which again is I, I expect a slight recovery after the um, after what we've had on um, what we had last night. Now um, I am mindful that the DXY is pushing down on the daily stochastic as well. We've had the five crossing down over the 200 EMA on Friday. This does not look good. The DXY looks like it's printing a collapsing pattern. If I were to see this on the one hour, I would have two options. It's either going to come down furiously or this is a top formation, level two, level three, W formation, we go up. So again, here, because of this crossing for the DXY, I would say the trend is down on the daily. I don't have any reason to believe that the DXY is reversing on the daily, except for all of these bullish divergences on my indicator. They're the only glimmer of hope for reversal um, for the DXY. But other than that, it's, it's a it's a very, um, how can I say, um, insistent, persistent trend down. So that's why I am very mindful about um, taking my profits from my shorts because, again, if the DXY decides to pump to tomorrow slash Wednesday, um, there may be, a, a, a sorry, to dump tomorrow slash Wednesday, there may be a move to the upside for crypto. Again, the DXY looks like it wants to um, it wants to push down on the daily and the four hourly. And when the daily and the four hourly are in line, uh, I think that is a strong message. So unless I see some recovery on the four hour and tomorrow some recovery on the daily, um, I would be very careful about um, the DXY supporting our short positions. I would be more inclined to think that the DXY is going to push down and our positions, um, sorry, and our crypto is going to move up. For the S&P, um, the S&P closed on uh, Friday with a down candle. To me on, uh, on Friday, let me just there we go. To me, on Friday, this is a down, uh, down, uh, downwards pattern. Um, the S and P supports um, a next level down towards the sixteen point eight and the twelve thirty for Ethereum. So the S and P supports that move, even a bit lower. I would go as far as to think that eleven eighty is quite. Um, Possible now 50 50. I'm for 11 80 uh, 80 percent. I'm for 12 30. I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit more on the cautious side because of everything that's been happening and the volatility in the sideways. So, um, 
the S&P hasn't yet corrected its previous swing. It's done a, a beautiful lift up, but it hasn't corrected it even with a 0 0.5 correction. I think that will happen uh, when we open today. And when we open today, we're going to um, move crypto as well. When the S&P moves to the down to correct even a 0 0.5 down to the next support and resistance line, and I believe we have some MAs there on the daily. Let me just check. I know the I know the Bollinger is there. Yes. Okay. We have the 50 EMA on the daily, a little bit higher. We have the uh, Bollinger on the daily, right on our 0 0.5 correction and right where the trend line is. So could the S&P come down and then lift up? Yes, absolutely, it could. We have the um, uh, we have three possible options either uh, come down to the 0 0.5 stay there consolidate for a while keep ranging sideways or break downwards come down to do a deeper correction to the 786 or consolidate quickly on the 0 0.5 and then reverse in the next day or the next session towards the upside um, so we do have um, and the daily stochastic is at the bottom for the DXY. Of course, it can stay down because look where it's coming from. It's coming from this overbought situation. It will stay down for uh, at least a, a while, a short while. Um, but that's that's how I um, that's how I would be I, I would be reading the, the situation as is at the moment. Um, so just to just to recap. We have made um, a strong move with uh, the drop last night. We've lost uh, the strong support on the 4-hour on both Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we have lost the support on the 12-hour for them as well, in terms of DMAs. We haven't yet touched the next support and resistance line, which is at 16.8 for Bitcoin and 12, 12.30 for Ethereum. I believe we're going to get there. What we do when we get there depends on the structure that is formed there. If it blasts through that level and continues to 16.3, even 15.8 for Bitcoin, or 11.10, uh, or 10, 11.10, 11 11.80, uh, or 10.80 for uh, Ethereum, that depends to be seen. And it depends on that, on that structure at the next support and resistance line. And I wish I could tell you more, uh, but technically, this is all that I can say. I believe we need to be very careful about securing profits at the next support and resistance line. That's my main message to you. That's, that's it for me. I'll be posting the levels on the chats. I'll be posting the S&P again for you to um, have a look before New York opens and to keep an eye out for moves um, on, on, on that chart, on that index. And if you guys have any questions, let me know.